In this problem, we're asked some information about quadrant location of an angle. And what we're given as clues is trig functions. So I'm told that sine of that angle is positive and cosine of that angle is negative. And from that alone, we should be able to figure out what quadrant we're in. The way you do this is first by knowing a little bit about what quadrants are. Yeah, I have four quadrants here. And in the first quadrant, sine of theta is positive and cosine of theta is positive. Now, I think an easy way to remember this is to remember that sine of theta is the y-coordinates, and cosine of theta is the x-coordinates, because it's very easy to remember that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So if x and y are both positive, you see why we have to be over here in quadrant one, right? And if x is negative, for example, but y is positive, that points to quadrant 2, where x is negative and y is positive. This is all the logic you need for this problem. So if I'm looking at sine, which remember, that is y is positive and cosine, or x, is negative. Well, I'm, I'm up, okay, this is the up, and it is the left. So that is quadrant 2. And likewise, if they're both positive, that would be quadrant 1. If they're both negative, that would be quadrant 3, right? Both of them negative would be over here in quadrant 3. And so on and so on and so on. Um, you'll find yourself using this skill very, very often. Um, it's a handy way to quickly locate an angle and then draw the accompanying triangle. Now, sometimes you'll see a different version of this problem, which talks about secants and cotangents and those sorts of things. Well, this is a little more complicated, but I'm still going to use this idea of a coordinate plane. The way I'm going to focus on this is by asking you a question. If I know that secant is negative, for example, what is secant? Let's think about that. Secant of theta equals 1 over cosine of theta, right? This is the reciprocal identity. Now, if secant is negative, Okay, so some negative number equals 1 over cosine. Do you see why cosine will have to be negative also? I don't actually know what that negative number is. I don't need to. As long as I know it's a negative sign, then cosine itself also has to be negative. So that means x is less than 0. Okay, and that's a clue that you can use to locate your angle. It's not enough, though. We still need to be able to do something with this cotangent information. Now, cotangent is not like sine and cosine. It's not going to be a simple uh, x or y coordinate. You have to remember what cotangent is as an equation. So let me just write this down in the margins here. Cotangent theta equals, if you remember your quotient identity, cotangent equals cosine divided by sine. Okay? So what that means is if this is negative... cotangent is negative. That means we've either got a negative divided by a positive, or we've got a positive divided by a negative. See, it has to be one of those two. So either cosine is negative, sine is positive, or cosine is positive, sine is negative. Well, look what I said right over here. I already said that x is negative. So this is the situation I am dealing with. It must be uh, cosine negative, sine positive. Or another way of thinking about it is this. If you want to mark tangents on this graph, tangent theta is greater than 0 in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Okay, That's where the sines of x and y are the same, either both positive or both negative. And that makes the tangent, which is the ratio of those two, it makes the tangent a positive number. Whereas... If y and x have different signs, that will make tangent negative, which happens in quadrants 2 and quadrants 4. So from this problem right here, from this information, cotangent less than 0, I know that I'm either here or here. I don't know which one, but I know I'm in one of those two. And then secant being negative, that points me to this one. 
Okay, so that answers the question. And you're going to go through that process for all of these things right here. See here, it tells me cotangent is negative. Again, that's happening in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 4. But it also tells me that secant, or sorry, cosecant is negative. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that only happens in quadrants 3 or 4. So you can see if cotangent says 2 or 4, cosecant says 3 or 4, well, 4 is the only answer that makes sense in this case.